Hey guys, I get asked a lot how to change your IP address. So today we're going to be using something called OpenVPN on a virtual private server to change our IP address. Now this is going to encrypt everything from us to that server and then to whatever we're downloading. So you can BitTorrent anonymously or you can pretty much just make your IP address whatever you want. So I've put everything step by step into this text file right here. I'm going to put it in the description and since everything everything's pretty in-depth here I'm gonna run through it kind of quickly on the tutorial just to save time so we're going to create a virtual private server on the service I use it's called DigitalOcean and they'll give you a terabyte of bandwidth for five dollars a month so you're gonna to go to your control panel hit create and we're gonna create a new droplet I'm just gonna name this one veep and since it's our VPN you know it's fitting so uh, the first one is the one I'm using here. It's a terabyte of transfer. It's more than enough for what we need. I'm going to choose San Francisco as the region, although you should use something outside of the US. I'm just choosing this one because it's faster as far as uh, me connecting to it for the purpose of this tutorial. Uh, for the OS, we're going to use Ubuntu 1204 64-bit. Make sure you get the 64-bit and hit Create Droplet. Once it starts creating your droplet, you can go hang around in your email and it's going to pop up. Mine already has. And it's going to show you the username and the SSH URL and the password for logging into your new computer. Altogether, it's probably going to take about one minute. You can see in this email here that they've sent me the IP address and the SSH credentials to log into my VPS remotely. I've got a terminal open right here. I'm using Ubuntu Linux with GNOME 3 on top of it. Um, it's pretty similar for just about anything. You can use this on Apple, Linux, Windows, uh, iOS, Android, you name it. It's all going to be rather similar. But to set it up, we're just going to use Ubuntu because it's easy. So paste this in there. It's going to ask us if we want to store this in our key ring. So just type in yes. And from there, copy and paste the password in the box. It's not going to show any stars or anything like that. So just hit paste and then hit enter. From this screen, we're going to update and upgrade everything on there. It's pretty standard for Linux and it's only going to take about five minutes and I'm going to time lapse it for you guys. Since we're already root, you don't have to type sudo and for our purposes, that's just going to set us behind. So type in apt get update and then ampersand ampersand apt get upgrade dash y which is going to tell it to just go ahead and start updating. Once it's done updating we're going to download the package file for OpenVPN. So flip over to the text file and copy and paste these two lines into the terminal. Once you start installing the OpenVPN file, it's going to show you a URL, but before you go to the URL, you need to go ahead and set the password for the OpenVPN user. You set the password by typing in passwd and then the name of the user, which in this case is OpenVPN. Hit enter and then type in your password. Make it something complex with letters, numbers, and symbols, but make sure that it's something that you can remember. Type it in a second time to make sure that you've got everything right. From here, we need to go ahead and go to the client UI and download our key file. Hit open link and it should take you right to it. If you get an error from Firefox, don't worry about it. It's because we signed our own HTTPS SSL key. Just click I understand the risks, add exception, get certificate and confirm security exception and it'll forward you to the right page. Once the OpenVPN page has loaded, log in with the information that we created in the previous steps. Open VPN, hit tab to go to password, and then type in the password. On the next screen you'll get an option to choose your operating system. Like I said before, you have Windows, OS X, Android, iOS, and Linux. We're using Linux, but I've already got another command line to install some good programs that are going to help you connect anyway. 
So click on yourself user locked profile, which creates a profile key just for this account. It's a very small file, so it shouldn't take long to download. Hit OK. And then from there, we're going to get back in the terminal and we're going to go to this next command, which is right here, and it just installs some tools that are going to help us connect through Network Manager. Hit paste, put the dash Y on the end, and then hit enter. <laughs> I just made a mistake here. Actually, you're supposed to install these tools on your own computer, not on the VPS. So open up a new tab, make the text bigger so that your viewers can see what you're doing, and then type in sudo and paste. Next, we're going to hit our password, and then from there, we're going to make sure that all these tools are installed. What this does is this makes this little network manager applet right here that shows the wireless networks, uh, it's going to add a little VPN button to it, which is going to be really handy in connecting to your VPN. Once we've installed all these tools on our local computer, <laughs> not, the, not the remote computer, we're going to type mkdir to add a directory and we're going to call it openvpn. From there type cd openvpn and ls to see that it's just a open directory with nothing in it. So from there we're going to copy from our downloads into that folder that key file that we just downloaded. This command should work but if not uh, it might be in a different folder and you can just move it over manually. So now we're going to type ls again and that ovpn file is there. So we're going to use an editor real quick to splice up this file into different files. It requires us to use uh, like I think four different files. So open up your your file browser, go to your downloads and here's the old one that I downloaded. We're going to delete that one. Wait, that might be the one that I need. Yep, that's actually the one that I need that I just uh, <laughs> that I just deleted there. So we're going to delete this one and download a new one and move that over. Usually I don't they, usually I don't make this many mistakes, but whatever, you know, mistakes happen. So hit up to repeat the last line. We're moving it over and ls and there we go. client.ovpn. So from client.ovpn, we're going to check out the open vpn folder here and open with sublime text. So what this looks like is kind of like an HTML file. You see this cert and key and stuff like that. It's kind of like XML actually. We're going to split this up into several different files. So first we're going to grab the one in between CA. Grab where it says begin certificate and end certificate. Hit copy and then create a new file and paste it in there. Okay, now this one I believe is called ca.cert, but I've made a note of it right here which shows you what to save each one as. So yeah, we're going to paste this new one into ca.crt. So file, save as, go to the open VPN folder which is going to be under your home, then open VPN and name it ca.crt. Hit save. Now we're going to do this three more times and they've got their file names listed down here. You're going to have to add this, uh, well actually we haven't even added it yet. We can go ahead and do that now. Go here, scroll down and there's going to be these four lines that you're going to have to add above the RSA private key and it tells you what each one should be called. So copy this one, find the RSA signature right here after TLS auth, hit enter a few times add this line, go back here, add this line, this one, and this one. Okay, now what this is doing is it's telling it to look at these files instead of looking at everything that's in here. This is due to an error in the coding that currently hasn't been fixed. So in the future you might not have to do this. So it's telling you to take everything from in between cert and change it into client.crt. So copy this, repeat what we just did, and then save it as client.crt. Save, go back to client ovpn, then we're gonna get the key I believe this one is called client.key. Yep. 
paste, save as client.key, save. Go back to the client OVPN. The next one we're going to do is TLS auth. This one, uh, you can grab this little bit up here. It's commented. It doesn't really matter, so it's not going to see it anyway. Um, but we're just going to copy this part. And I think this one is going to be called TA dot something. Yeah, TA dot key. So save this one as TA dot key. So now you should have a few files in your OpenVPN folder. Whoops, I've saved a few of them to the wrong location. So we can go to James and OpenVPN, put it in the shortcuts, save it as TA.key. Let's see which ones we don't have. CA.cert, client.cert, TA.key. We need to save client.key there. Whoops. Client.key. There we go. Okay, so we can delete this one that we accidentally made. So now we have five files in the OpenVPN folder. Great. All right, so back to the directions. So we've created the five files that we needed. We've added these lines to our uh, to our client.ovpn. Go ahead and save your client.ovpn and all your files that you've got there. Make sure that everything is good. And next we're going to add the network via the little icon right here. Currently you can see that uh, we just have the available wireless networks nearby. Go to network settings and this should be similar in just about all uh, versions of Ubuntu. Uh, whether you have XFCE or GNOME or whatever. So just add a new network. It's going to be interface VPN, hit create, and then instead we're going to do import a saved VPN configuration. Hit create and go to the open VPN folder we created, click on client.ovpn, hit open, and I think we have to go to advanced next because it'll have all of this stuff already pre-populated in there. Go to Advanced, and then from Advanced go to TLS Authentication. Key file is TA.key, and now we have to find the key direction. So go to your client.ovpn, hit Control F for Find, and type in Direction. You see right here it says Key Direction 1. So from Key Direction 1, we just go Key Direction 1 right there, and then we give it a name. Uh, it's going to be in the next window. Just hit OK. In this one, we give it a name, uh, we'll just call it Veeper. And so what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to start this uh, whenever we like. So the save uh, button right there isn't showing, so it looks like I didn't do something. Let's go check at our script right here. Ah, the one thing, the one thing that we forgot is our username and password for the VPN. So username is OpenVPN. Your password is the one that we defined earlier and now it should allow us to save. Sorry about that. Hit save, and now you're gonna see Veeper VPN or whatever you named it. Go ahead and turn it on, and it's gonna stay not connected. Um, we have to manually enable it right here. You'll notice that the little icon turns into a lock right here whenever you're connected to the VPN. We can see that our IP address changes whenever we turn this on and off. So let's turn it off. So now that it's off, it's returned to the little wireless icon. Minimize this, and we're going to go to a web page called whatismyip.org, and it's going to tell you what your public-facing IP is. You can see that it's, uh, it's just a regular old AT&T IP address. We can turn on our VPN, wait for this little lock right here to turn into a lock with a pipe coming out of the bottom. It only takes about five seconds. Hit Control F5 and you'll notice that our IP address changes to the IP address of that server in San Francisco. So we've effectively created our VPN. All your traffic through your computer is going to be encrypted and go straight to your VPN and then out again. So you can use this for a lot of different things, whether it be torrenting anonymously, 
uh, let's see, you can get around Netflix from Canada like this. You can also keep Comcast from throttling your traffic in different ways. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Share, like, and subscribe if you like it. Be sure to tell your friends. And in the next video, we're going to be revisiting this little series that we like to call Fading Away, How to Become Anonymous. So anyway, guys, y'all take it easy. Keep it sleazy. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.